All right, I think I may have this problem resolved now. Uh, this is, again, the Holt Algebra 2 book, page 449, problem 20. And we're finding the polynomial that has roots 2 minus i, root 3, and 2. Uh, we know that if we have a root 2 minus i, we also have a t root 2 plus i. If we have a root 3, uh, a root that is root 3, we also have a root that is negative root 3, and our constant does not, I mean, it's just the constant. So we have five roots total, giving us a degree five polynomial at the end of the day, which tells us we're going to have a term that has x to the fifth in it. So here's my setup. Um, just like the book's instructions tells us to do, we have an x minus the quantity 2 minus i, and x minus the quantity 2 plus i. We have an x minus root 3. We have an x minus negative root 3, and we have an x minus 2. Um, Wolfram Alpha taught me that I can simplify this further, get rid of the parentheticals. So I have rewritten it this way, getting rid of my spare parentheticals. And now I just need to multiply these two factors together to turn that into a single factor. I'm going to multiply these two factors together to turn that into a single factor, which I will combine with this. So. I wind up with two factors at the end of the day. I've used the tabular method. Um, I have the x plus i minus 2 on, on the top. Could be on the side, but I put it on the top. And then I have this factor here on the side, x minus i minus 2. And I have combined them to come up with these nine factors. Uh, one critical factor was to turn my minus i times a positive i, which would be a negative i squared, into 1 because i squared is negative 1 but I have a negative i squared so this turns into a 1 that actually was causing me problems uh, because I didn't bother turning it into a 1 at first so that was an important step um, when I combine these two together again using the tabular method I ended up with this expression down here which I was able to cancel out my root 3x terms and simply have an x squared minus a 3, which I multiplied with my x minus 2 term right here, and ended up with an x to the third minus 3x minus 2x squared plus 6. The only thing I haven't done yet is turn this into an expression. So let's do that. rp of x equals x squared plus xi minus 2x minus xi plus 1 plus 2i minus 2x minus 2i plus 4. I think I got all the terms there. Wish my focus was better all the way along this very long polynomial, but I seem to go out of focus here. I know I'm going to keep my x squared because it's the only one, but let's combine some like terms. And this is where we have a little magic. These cancel each other out. Isn't that nice? We got rid of those i's. Okay. And then we have a couple of other i terms that also cancel each other out. That just makes life so much easier. Do I have any x terms? I do. These are going to end up being a minus 4x. And this is going to end up being a plus 5. Woohoo! Made that a lot simpler. And then I'm going to multiply this by this factor over here, which is x to the third minus 3x minus 2x squared plus 6. We know we're on a good path because I know when we combine these two terms, I'm going to have an x to the fifth, which is exactly what I want. Let's do it. Um, I'm going to actually do a tabular combination again. So I'll, I'll put these three terms down here. I have an x squared minus 4x plus 5. I'm using this as my header. And I wind up with x to the fifth. Lovely. Minus 3x to the third minus 2x to the fourth plus 6x squared, and then this is going to be 
minus 4x to the fourth, and a positive 12x squared, and a positive 8x to the third, and a minus, uh, I'm getting stumped on such simple multiplication, right? 6 times negative 4 is negative 24x. And then I have a 5x to the third, and a minus 15x, and a minus 10x squared, and a plus 30. So I'm gonna have the unsimplified version of this is going to be pretty long. Let's see if I can get it all on one piece of paper. Okay, so we have P of X equals, okay, start here. X to the fifth minus 3x to the third minus 2x to the fourth plus 6x squared, the second row. Minus 4x to the fourth plus 12x squared plus 8x to the third minus 24x, third row. Plus 5x to the third minus 15x minus 10x plus 30. That's ridiculous. Um, I should have four times, I should have 12 terms. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Good. And hopefully I kept my positives and negatives straight. We know we don't have another x to the fifth. What about x to the third though? There's one. There's one. And that's it. So minus 3 plus 8 is 5 plus 5 is 10. 10x to the third. Let's see, do we have any more? I should cross those off. Keep my accounting straight. Minus 2x to the fourth. Another x to the fourth. And that's it for my x's to the fourth. So I got a minus 2 minus 4, so we have a minus 6x to the fourth. Um, we have x squared here, and another x squared here, and that's it for my x squareds. So we have an 18x squared, and we have a minus 24x, minus 15x, and a minus 10x. So minus 25 minus 24 is minus 49. All right, I'll take it. And then I only have plus 30 over here. I know that this is not in order, but it is six terms, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I happen to know, I remember, I didn't bring the book home, but I remember that we had six terms at the end of the day, and that it was a degree five polynomial. So I'll just put them in standard order, which is x to the fifth minus six x to the fourth plus 10 x to the third plus 18 x squared minus 49 x plus 30. I believe we're done. Um, I'll check the book later to make sure.